the objectives of May's Association of Nigeria? Basically, is to ensure that the country has people that will produce adequate quantities of maize needed by Nigeria and enough for export. When we have surplus, we should be able to export. That's the central objective. How many members do you have? I may not be able to give you the exact number, but uh, as at the last count, we have over half a million members because we have members in every state of the Federation, including the Federal Capital Territory. And many more members are coming because they have seen the achievements of the association. But a basic uh, objective of the association is that we are trying to raise one million members in total. We believe that if we are able to raise a million members, we will be able to cover every uh, area and the potential to produce will have been covered. What informed the decision to form this association? Well, the basic idea as at that time, incidentally, the idea to form the association came out of IITA program when we were starting the, pro, uh, the hybrid maize program. Then the director of maize program, Dr. S.K. Kim, uh, felt that if there is uh, a maize association that will use the products of the hybrid maize, it will be faster and easier to adopt the technology. So, and uh, that it will be easier also for us to develop the seed industry in Nigeria because hybrid maize requires a special technology and that the farmer has to buy the seed every year will be able to sustain the seed industry and then the farmers that will benefit will be able to take the product directly from the seed company. So this is the chain uh, that uh, led to the establishment of Maize Association of Nigeria. Okay. Now maize production in Nigeria, for instance, is still uh, estimated at 1.5 uh, tons per yeah. hectare. That's now, right. uh, there was this move by the government that sought to double that uh, production. Now, what can you see? Because the project has entered a terminal stage now, and uh, what can you see that has really become of that project? Well, as at the time the project was uh initiated in 2006, the production level on the average was 1.5, as you have said, tons per hectare. But when that project was to take place, the, 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 the target was to double production per hectare, take it from 1.5 to 3 tons per hectare, that a farmer that cannot combine the production inputs to give us three tons was really not qualified to be involved in the scheme because we did not want to increase hectare. We wanted to increase production per unit area that we already have. So the, 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 the intention was to intensify production so that we can double what was on ground. Uh, I will want to tell you that even some of the farmers made more than three tons, a few who are not uh, too good made a little bit less. But I can tell you that if all the production uh, inputs and the technology is properly used today, Nigeria can say boldly, without any uh, mistake, that many of our farmers can produce three tons per hectare using the technologies that was recommended for that program on Dublin Mills in Nigeria. What effort uh, is your organization making in order to disseminate some of the you know, findings of that research in order to help lift up uh, production? Let me, let me clarify this, that the technology that was used for that program was not new. 
the National Research uh, System and the IITA already have the technology. All that was necessary was to bring it to the people and uh, assist them to adopt it. So it was not new. But the question you are asking is the fact that the network, the maize network in Nigeria is very strong. Very, very strong. More than any other crop. Maybe because of the facility we have at IITA that is linking up properly with the research system in Nigeria and linking with the ministries of agriculture all over the country and the federal ministry of agriculture. And of course, the private sector, Mesa Association of Nigeria, was brought into limelight to be the arrowhead of the implementation. And since we are the beneficiaries of the research finding, it was easier for, all, for our members to adopt because all the research people are telling us that we can be better farmers if we take the technology. And I must tell you that every farmer is out there in the field because he wants to make more, more money. Uh, the attractive is good enough to propel the technology. Do you think Nigerian farmers still understand what are aflatoxins? Well, they may, they may see the fungus on the maize cob, but really many Nigerian farmers do not know the extent uh, of what they are seeing, what it is, uh, what effect it has on the, on the people as a result of eating uh, this, the grain that is already contaminated. I think we just need a lot of awareness, a lot of uh, teaching to do to get our farmers to see the importance of aflatoxin in our food. We really don't know much. I must, I must tell you. But the problem is that you, you don't see it physically. You, the problem is not seen physically. It's the effect that you see that it causes something, something. If you look at the issue of uh, millibug in, in cassava, you, the farmer sees it and sees his plant dying. In this case, the, 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 the aflatoxin does not have, affect the maize. You don't, you don't see it that is causing anything. It is the after effect that is there. Uh, that affects the people so, or the animals that eat this product. What do you think we can begin to do to really bring the message to the people? It involves a collective effort from all of us. The Research Institute, the ADPs, the Mays Association of Nigeria. The press has a lot to do because the effect is very, very serious and therefore if we don't collaborate to get the farmers to know the importance of the effect on human beings and on animals, we will not make any progress. What has been the collaboration between the Maize Farmers Association of Nigeria and IIT? I would say it's very, very excellent because I can remember since 1984, I've been relating with IITA. And when this association was formed, it was formed in IITA here in 1992. And since then, it has been very good collaboration. So what are the areas you think IITA can improve on so that this partnership will grow from strength to strength? Uh, well, I cannot predict. I don't know the capacity of IITA to improve what they have. But the, what is crucial is that whenever there is a need, and we call IITA, they have always answered. The DG has been very cooperating, and the MES team, Dr. Ajala and his team, they, Menki, all of them have been very, very collaborative with us. So that collaboration is what is important. If you have problem and you call your friend, he answers, then you are okay. So I believe that at any level that uh, we, made, we make any request, I think they have the capacity to, to support us. That's all we need.